Hey everyone, so welcome to this another video of system design. So we'll understand about something which is system models in a distributed system. Now we'll learn about what system models are and like their different types and like how we can leverage them when creating communication link between two services or any processes that are running. Uh, let's go and let's learn about communication model. So let's say a service one is communicating with a service two. Now in this case, there can be certain models of communication, right? So the first model is a fair loss link model. In this, it assumes that a message may be lost and duplicated. If sender keeps retransmitting a message, eventually it will be delivered to the destination. Now this means that under this fair loss link model, the service one will keep on transmitting the message to service two. And it is said that if even if one of the message get lost, eventually the message will reach to the service two if the sender keeps sending that message, right? So this is the first model. The second model is reliable link. Now in this model, it is said that a message is delivered exactly once without any loss and duplication. A reliable link can be implemented on top of fair loss uh, model by duplicating messages at the receiving side. Okay. Um, so this reliable link model is that only the message will be sent only one time, right? Now service two has the job to receive that message always like service one won't be retransmitting the message but there will be something over here an adapter or something that is expected to always record that message and even if service two is down it like in some way it is it is it is necessary to ensure that the message reaches the service two so this is what a reliable link is so reliable link means that 100 percent of the time the message that is delivered it will be reaching the service without any loss and duplication. Now the third way is authenticated reliable link. Now in this, it makes the same assumption as the reliable link, but it also additionally assumes that the receiver can authenticate the message sender. So the second service, which is receiving the message from the service one, will have a way to authenticate that the message is coming from the first service. So this is where um, the last communication model comes. Now, this was in terms of communication and how the link between them. So basically this link between service one and service two of communication is formed. So these are different models of that. But if we go on to the node failure, so there are, so these service one and service two can individually fail as well. So for them, we have certain fault models. So in which the service one or service two, the communicating services or nodes, they fail, right? So the first model is arbitrary fault model. So in this model, it is assumed that a node can deviate from its algorithm in arbitrary ways. Now this, this model comes after the message has been communicated. It is saying that it can happen that this service two starts behaving in a way it is not expected to. Like there can be some crashes or unexpected behavior due to bugs or malicious activities. So this service two is, can, can, uh, it is possible for this service two to not perform the way it is expected to, but in the same case, it is expected that this model will operate correctly if the number of nodes present are greater, like if, if even if one third of the nodes are faulty, this particular model will operate correctly. So now in this, in this diagram, I have, I have one service and service two. Now this service two is consisting of various nodes. like. It's not just one node over here. Let's assume that the service to consist of 10 different nodes who are running the exact same code, like they are replica of each other. And they are there to ensure that the service keeps running. So even if one node is down, the other node will be there to serve the traffic. So let's assume that is happening in service two. So like this arbitrary fault model is saying that, okay, in our case, some of the nodes may not perform as expected, but still, there is an algorithm through which one third of if, even if, if if the number of faulty nodes are less than one third it will eventually operate correctly right that is the first model so the second model is crash recovery model this assumes that a node that the node does not deviate from the algorithm it can't crash and restart at any time losing its in memory state so this is a, an, a, again an assumption that this node will not at all deviate, right? And then the third model is a crash crash uh, stop model in which it assumes that the node does not deviate from the algorithm, but if it crashes, it will never come back online, right? So this is 
this is how the three models of node failures work right now there is something as timing assumption as well so first of all we understood the link between the services second we understood how the service are, services are designed like the individual node inside them the third will be the timing assumption that this communication within a service or across services they can be synchronous in nature which means that it assumes that sending a message or executing an operation never takes over a certain amount of time this is unrealistic in real world so synchronous means that yeah you'll send a request and it has to give you back a result in let's say some amount of time which is fixed now asynchronous says that you'll have to wait for the request to come by and like it will come by in an un um, unbounded amount of time like it can sometimes take let's say 5 second it can sometimes take as large as 50 seconds as well like this is just an example but the 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 model asynchronous means that you can't keep a bound on how much time the particular request will take it can take a larger time as well so like the telephone trans the payment transaction that we do they are asynchronous in nature because they can take some time sometimes they happen in like one minute sometimes they happen in two minute and sometimes they even fail like after three minutes they fail right so these these are sometimes so subtypes of asynchronous model now the, the drawback of asynchronous model is that you can't without a bound on the maximum limit of time there are some problems that cannot be solved again the same problem as 100% reliable transactions right like reliability is there in the transaction that it will either succeed or fail but like you you are not ensured that your transaction will happen 100% of the time sometimes the bank may not be available or like the server might not be serving you so maybe the maybe it is not able to serve right maybe it takes more time 5 minutes or more so in that case like uh, there are some problems which are, which cannot be solved due, due to, uh, if we take in this asynchronous assumption then there is the last model which is partially synchronous that means that system behaves synchronously most of the time but for some request it will take asynchronous time this is how our code is written mostly like we create some functions as asynchronous so those fra functions will take an unbounded amount of time but other functions are expected to you know give back re results instantaneously so yeah this is partially synchronous model but um, so these are the three types of timing assumption so we'll dive deeper into how the coordination between different services and like within services different nodes uh, they communicate with each other and like just um, we'll check about how the system becomes reliable and all in the next coming videos but for this video that's all thank you guys see you in the next one